This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 1821. Three Big Picture Action Steps for Better Injury Recovery by Kate Galliott of fitforreallife.com. And I'm Dr. Neil, your host and narrator. Hey there, happy Saturday. I hope your weekend is off to a great start. And welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, or OHD, where I act as your narrator of popular health and fitness blogs and always provide my commentary at the end. Now, don't forget, we have a bunch of shows where we cover other topics, not just health-related ones. Just search for Optimal Living Daily in your podcast app to find them. And with that, let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. Three Big Picture Action Steps for Better Injury Recovery by Kate Galliott of fitforreallife.com. In a previous post, I covered items you can do yourself to immediately get yourself on a better path to healing from an injury. In terms of seeing the forest from the trees, in my previous post, we were looking at the trees. Today, we'll look at the forest. That is, what needs to be in your big picture for you to achieve true injury recovery. There are three key elements a smart human puts into their big picture plan for healing themselves. One, use science on your side, in particular, pain science. Two, use the one ounce less principle. And three, get thee to a physiotherapist. A good one, mind you. The hope is to always avoid injury, but sometimes that's just not the way the cookie's gonna crumble. Learn these strategies so that the next time injury strikes, you're ready brain makes you say what? Ouch. Your brain can make you say ouch even when there is nothing to actually ouch at. Did you know that your brain can continue to send ouch pain signals to you when you move the injured area even after the injury has healed and there should be no pain left? It's true. Pain science has shown us that the brain connects the movement that occurred during the injury to the pain of the injury. Even once the tissue is healed, the brain can hold on to a signal of perceived threat when you move into a position similar to the one that you were injured in. Simply put, the body can still hurt even though it doesn't actually hurt anymore. I can attest to the truth of phantom pain. After a major fall off the balance beam that resulted in a fantastic ankle injury, complete with a popping noise on impact, any time my doctor would work my ankle through range of motion work into the exact position it was in during the injury, I'd feel pain well up inside me, but it felt different. I could tell it wasn't real, but it still felt like it was going to hurt. My hands would get clammy, and I would have to take a few deep breaths as he slowly moved my foot into that position. Only after doing that numerous times and realizing that once we got to the injury position and it didn't actually hurt, did my brain start to reset the connection. Angle movement does not equal pain, and the pain and fear subsided. You've got to move slowly and methodically if you're going to work out any residual phantom pain. When we feel pain, we naturally move away from it. We compensate. We recruit other areas to do more of the work so that the pain-filled area doesn't need to do as much. Is that really what you want your body doing when you head out on a run after tweaking your low back so bad you can't stand up fully straight? You've got to put yourself in a controlled, conscious environment first and build the movement pattern before moving into an uncontrolled, unconscious environment. This means doing controlled, thoughtful movements with great care and attention before going into something that has to be unconscious and reactionary because of how quickly it happens, like running, jumping, or sporting. And this is where the one ounce less principle comes in. Less is more, the one ounce principle. When it comes to returning to workouts after an injury, my motto is this. One ounce less is infinitely better than one ounce too much. One ounce too much is that, oh God, tweak. You felt that time you were working out because you wanted to feel a workout again, but your body just wasn't healed enough for what you dished out to it. One ounce too much is the limp that comes back after you run because your social group was doing three miles this morning. And rather than just do a portion of that with them, you went the whole way and did it at their non-injured pace. One ounce too much is the injury that never seems to heal because your output and workouts post-injury looked something like this. 0% effort during injury, 40% during first workout back, 100% intensity thereafter. As you return to training, plan what you're going to start back with first and then plan to do 50% of what you think you're capable of. 
plan it. Write down your plan. Stick to your plan. This isn't going to say that sticking to your plan is going to be without challenges. It's incredibly easy to go off the rails once you get into a workout. Either the feeling of endorphins kicks in and you go running for the horizon with your workout, or you forget what you needed to do in terms of controlled, conscious movements, and you miss the chance to do rehab work. When ankle mobility drills need to be done, want to take a guess how easy it is to forget to do them in your workout when fun things like rows, handstands, and kettlebell swings lay ahead? As easy as boiling water. It's stupid easy to conveniently forget to do one of the most important portions of your workout, your injury rehab. Why do we forget if we don't write it down? Because injury recovery exercises aren't a normal part of our training routine, so they're not front of mind. Because we don't want to think about the injury. Because we want to do things that release endorphins. And let's be honest, rotator cuff drills don't necessarily invoke the endorphins or endorphins in you. How to start smart using the one ounce less principle. So you've got recovery to do, and you know that your brain will chase the dopamine if you let it. But letting your brain chase that cheeky dopamine kick is an easy way to skip the recovery and find yourself in even more pain. So let's not do that. Instead, when you're in recovery, here's how you can start your workout smarter by using the one ounce less principle. One, do an appropriate amount of movement prep to warm up your body and brain for the workout ahead. Start slow. This could be the very same movements you were doing all week prior to this to bring mobility back to the injured area, like hip circles, arm raises, air squats, and so on. Two, test your desired movements first for function and pain before loading them up. Start at less than 50% work capacity. Slowly increase your intensity or load. And three, plan on doing only a few of everything you had planned for the day. You want to stop before you are near fatigue work volume. Remember, workouts are a signal to your body. It's like continuing to practice a skill when your capacity to do it has been passed for the day. If all you're practicing is garbage reps, all you're getting is garbage stimulus. Injury isn't forever. As I hope you've heard, there are smarter ways to fix yourself after an injury. No one likes injuries. I advocate bulletproofing yourself against them. But if you do get injured, and it's such that there is pain, take action, please. Start self-care. Use pain science to your advantage, but also get in to see someone to help you heal. You don't have to go the injury recovery route alone. You can do injury recovery better. You can do it differently next time. Although I hope your next time is a long way off. You just listened to the post titled, Three Big Picture Action Steps for Better Injury Recovery by Kate Galliott of fitforreallife.com. As the saying goes, you're only as old as you feel. And if you want to slow down the aging process and live a more energetic, active life, our sponsor, Inside Tracker, can help. Inside Tracker is the only human performance system that provides you with a personalized plan to boost your metabolism, reduce stress, improve sleep, and optimize your health for the long haul. Created by leading scientists in aging, genetics, and biometrics, Inside Tracker is a combination of blood, DNA, and fitness tracking. Not just blood only, not just DNA only. It doesn't merely show the normal biomarker zones, it shows you the optimal biomarker zones and numbers that are best for your body. And Inside Tracker's reliability is unparalleled. Inside Tracker is HIPAA compliant, and their reputation remains untarnished throughout their 10 years of business handling tens of thousands of blood tests. They've implemented the best practices for security and are continuously improving them to meet the highest industry standards. For a limited time, you can get 20% off the entire Inside Tracker store. Just go to insidetracker.com slash OHD. Insidetracker.com slash OHD. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. I have been so guilty of the one ounce too much example. I still remember, there was a time when I was recovering from a slight strain in my lower back when I had the genius idea of trying to perform some heavy deadlifts. My mind was telling me, just go for it, you can do this. But my body was saying the complete opposite. So the first couple of lighter sets went fine. But when I added a bit more weight, I felt my body resisting. My lower back was sending me signals that I should stop. But I ignored those signals and decided to do the opposite. 
Instead, I added more weight to the barbell before performing my next deadlift. So I added the weight, lowered my body to lift the barbell, and on my way up, up, my lower back decided it had had enough. I felt that oh God tweak that today's author Kate referred to. After that, I couldn't perform another deadlift for at least two weeks until my lower back felt normal again. Not worth it. I can be very impatient, but recovery should never be rushed. As Kate said, injuries aren't forever. It's worth allowing yourself time to recover properly and setting realistic expectations for yourself. Take it from me. All right, that'll do it for today. I hope you're having a great weekend if you're listening in real time. And I'll see you back here tomorrow for the Sunday show and where your optimal life awaits.